For many years now, players have been asking the developers of Rise of Kingdoms for a way to reset a legendary commander and get back all of the sculptures that they've invested in that commander. And yes, I am looking at you, Sargon. But the reason that we're talking about this today is because it seems like the developers are seriously considering adding something like this, which was revealed this past weekend at the Los Angeles player meetup. And so today I'm going to go over a couple of really crucial updates for Rise of Kingdoms. And unlike yesterday's video, literally all of these changes seem to be really good to me and so I'm really excited to go over what they revealed because we have to celebrate the good if we're going to criticize the bad but first what's going on guys cheers now just like yesterday's video the information in this video comes from Chiskel posting his content on his channel the other day because he actually went to the LA player meetup now at the end of this video I'm going to explain why I wasn't actually at the LA player meetup but I'm going to link Chiskel's video down below please go over there and take a look he's going to go into more detail about some of these things so if you have more questions I'm sure he can answer them but in this video we're going to go over sort of the top level bullet points and I'm going to give you guys my thoughts and opinions on all of this and if you appreciate breaking news videos like this where I give you my thoughts and opinions drop a thumbs up on the video okay now quick disclaimer okay all of these things were discussed by the devs at the player meetup but that doesn't mean that all of these things are set in stone or are guaranteed to happen or not happen so please take this with a grain of salt okay these things as usual with like pre-release or early information until it's actually in the game nothing is really finalized okay now the first thing that i want to talk about here is actually the remastered graphics in rise of kingdoms now as you guys know i've been in kvk for the past like month or so king's land ended on i think monday morning for me so this past weekend was like i was so sleep deprived which is why there was a lack of videos but i've been playing with the remastered graphics for the past month and it seems like the developers are going to be tweaking these graphics a little bit they did ask players for their feedback on the graphics when they first implemented these and teased them and they're probably going to take that feedback and tweak some of the things that players had the most issue with i think a lot of players talked about about how green the grass was which look if you compare it to the previous grass yes it's more green okay but as somebody who's played with these graphics for 30 days you literally do not re like it is it literally falls into the background it becomes an, a non-issue it is is literally nothing like you literally of course when you first look at the new graphics it might be jarring but after you play with it for 30 days there's literally no problem like you're just you're just playing the game like nothing changes this is just the game now the game looks great like that's just how it is I don't know how else to explain explain it but like you just get used to it and then when you think back on it you realize that the complaint it's too green was just so absurd because it's literally a color like just a little baby need a band-aid for the green colors I know the green is scary like it's a color brother it's a color what are we talking about it's a color anyway I I've I've made fun of people enough for this basically the developers are tweaking this the new graphics they're probably going to be making a couple of changes most likely it's probably mostly finished right like they're probably mostly going to take what they've already done but it sounds like they'll just do a couple of tweaks to make things a little bit more in line with what players want and what they want to experience in the game which is good one of the other changes that they're planning on doing is remastering sort of the commander view okay and according to Chiskel in his video he said that it sounds like they're going to be starting with some of the older commanders first and I did notice this uh sometime like maybe a year ago or so but if you look at the commanders that came out when the game came out they are a little bit less uh detailed than some of of the newer commanders in the game like if you just look at the way that they're designed and things like that I mean it just it, it's it's the same exact art style but the newer commanders do seem to be a little bit well I guess not Guan Yu but they do seem to be a little bit more high quality designs and maybe that's just my mind playing tricks on me but it sounds like what they're going to be doing is starting with the older legendary commanders and older commanders in the game in general and they're going to be making them a little bit better now it sounds like Cheskel described this as making them slightly more 3d okay which I'm not really sure what that means I don't know if that uh, you know I don't know if we're going to get a full 3d model I don't know if that really makes sense like it I don't know if they need to go through all that effort right because at the end of the day like you're just going to see them as like a little dot on the map so like why would they go through all that effort but maybe they will I'm not going to say no to that like I'm I I'm excited for any graphical update that they're doing here but just know that these old commanders will probably be getting a, a higher quality touch of paint and 
maybe they'll increase like the lighting effects maybe the the metals will look a little bit better right like Trisco said that these changes seemed pretty minor so I wouldn't expect a dramatic change here but I expect them to be maybe a little bit better and honestly that's fine so all in all the developers are still working on the remastered graphics here in rise of kingdoms and to me that is a two thumbs up I'm super excited about that I have been very positive about all of the graphical changes so far because we got to remember guys this is not a change that they had to do like them doing this is literally just a quality of life improvement for everyone playing the game and everyone that will download the game in the future right the game is already massively successful it already makes millions of dollars a month like they didn't have to do this but they are doing it and I'm really excited for that and I'm really grateful for it so that's the first change that I'm very excited about the second thing we're going to talk about is VIP 19. now you might be saying on New York didn't you say at the beginning of this video that everything in this video was something you're excited about and I did and I stand by that at least based on the information that we know right now okay VIP 19 according to Chiskel sounds like it will be unlocking a shop so when you get to VIP 19 then potentially you will unlock a VIP 19 shop that gives you access to cosmetic items that you can get possibly with excess VIP and that would be the benefit that you get by reaching VIP 19. So in other words, the developers, according to Chesco, right? They allegedly stated that they didn't want to add more combat buffs for VIP 19. And I think that's the right mindset to have. I think VIP 18 was a big letdown for me because it gave you that troop capacity, which is just so, so, so powerful in the open field. It's really unfair to a lot of players that don't get that extra 10%. And so, well, if you're VIP 13 or below, it's 15% more. But regardless, I found the unit capacity thing to be really disappointing. It also makes it so that way it's like really hard to compete in Sunset Canyon and Lost Canyon unless you're a VIP 18 player. And so again I just didn't love this also the fact that I just got VIP 18 right like I just got it and, I, and when I made a video talking about VIP 18 and reaching that milestone I sort of like half jokingly half serious said that I bet VIP 19 is going to come this year right I, I said that in the video because it seemed to be the case for me that based on like my spend level and progression it seems like the new VIP will typically come shortly after for me personally right so I was kind of kidding there but I also kind of felt like it was the truth and it turns out that I was I was kind of on the money there VIP 19 does seem to be confirmed and coming I don't know exactly when maybe Chisco has the answer to that but the good news here is that it seems like the VIP 19 will not get any more combat stats right so troop capacity or maybe bonus damage or anything like that it doesn't seem like they're going to be getting any of that but instead they're going to be focusing on cosmetic things now one of the cosmetic things that Chiskel showed off in his video and I'm not going to show it here you guys can watch his video if you want to see it but they did mention that there would be potential new teleportation animations right and my understanding of this is that you know these players who reach VIP 19 they get access to the shop they would be able to acquire special animations for teleporting right so for example and, and this isn't what was shown in the video but this is just what you know comes to my mind imagine if when you teleport as a VIP 19 player imagine you can get a special animation where like a ball of fire goes around your city and you shoot up and then when you land on the map there's like a fire explosion out of your city right like imagine Imagine that sort of thing I think that would be super awesome right you would just show up to the battlefield make a super cool entrance and people would be like oh my god it's a badass right I think that's awesome I love that idea especially because again as a cosmetic only feature it's not going to affect gameplay for free-to-play players low spenders or players that are just never gonna get VIP 19 right like that's the truth 99.99 percent of players are never going to get VIP 19 it's probably higher than that to be honest with you it's probably like 99.995 because the amount of you know the amount of VIP points you need to get there is absurd even VIP 18 is basically unattainable for many players so yeah the fact that it would be cosmetic only is exciting now the other thing that Chesco mentioned in his video is that they were considering new things for like marching animations right and so if I zoom in here you could see that when my Huo is running you could see there's like a little dust trail coming out from behind him I can imagine a world where again imagine that there's like flames coming out the back or something like that or maybe as he's marching there's like like some you know electricity that's swirling around your army right it's it's those types of cosmetic things that I think are definitely an area of opportunity for rise of kingdoms and you know in other games like rise of kingdoms we've already seen these types of things like I think 
it was I don't know if it was land of empires or something like that but there are games where like you can literally put a skin on your March and make it look like a dragon or something right like it's 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 crazy how much you can customize your marches in other games now in rise of kingdoms I think the reason that they have sort of strayed away from this in general is because there's actual open field fighting right like in other games you just send an army to a destination and it battles and it comes back in rise of kingdoms you can do what I'm doing right now and you can move your army freely around the map and it can go wherever it wants and it can stand in place right and so in rise of kingdoms the open field combat and movement and how your commanders look on the map does make a big difference whereas in other games it doesn't matter because there is no open field combat right so I think that's probably why so far rise of kingdoms has strayed away from that because they want it to be very clear as to what you're actually hitting right like it matters what that commander is that I'm hitting in the open field when we're doing PvP right and so being able to tell immediately what your enemy is using is important if you will of course if you're not playing in dot mode or something like that which you know I think that's probably why they've waited so long to do this but I think if they do this right if the animations aren't too insane and you could still easily tell what the army is then I think this is another double thumbs up like this is great this is amazing I want to see more cosmetic things like this I think it will help players distinguish themselves amongst everybody else I mean right now the fighting has kind of ended in kvk for me and so a lot of people have changed their city skins to whatever they want but a lot of players just use twilight falls right and you look on the battlefield and a lot of people just look the same and so I think there's definitely an opportunity here for more cosmetic things and it seems like VIP 19 is the answer to that now the other thing that I love about this is that if it comes in the form of a shop then this is something that can be added to over time right like this could possibly be the last VIP level ever now I suspect deep down I suspect VIP 20 will be the last VIP level but I think that VIP 19 having a shop could indicate that maybe it is the last one and if that's the case then they can update the shop over time to constantly give those end game players new things to get their hands on right and I think that's really important that way in the future we don't have to think of like okay well what do we do for VIP 20 now like oh my god right so I think that's super important constantly updating what VIP 19 gets that way they don't have to constantly think of like new VIP levels that's going to be huge and I'm really excited to see that personally I wish that they would just not add VIP 19 and just make VIP 18 get the shop right like once you hit 18 you're maxed out and then you get the shop but that's just me um either way I'm excited that it sounds like they're only going to be doing cosmetic things for VIP 19. there also could be an opportunity here and they did not say this so this is my own speculation and possibly my own feedback for them possibly they could add transmog you know skins to that shop and so you know you could keep using your current city skin and then transmog it to like you know maybe VIP 19 gets like a you know vampire castle type of thing I think that would be super cool yes it would make it harder to tell what city skin your enemy is using so in like a rally or garrison scenario but I mean at the end of the day and you can tell me in the comment section below but how often do you guys look at the enemy city skin how often do you do that like seriously ask yourself because I never check I literally never look I'm not a rally or garrison leader though so maybe I'm like not the target demographic here but I don't care what my enemy is using um it's a micro optimization they're gonna get a couple more stats I get that you know some of them give you 15 percent which is a lot but that's just another thing that they can consider that transmog feature I think would be really cool or again maybe instead of it being a whole new city skin right like let's say the city skins you get the cool ones from Xenoth of power right now let's say they could keep doing that what if the transmog feature just keeps the same city skin but you just have like you know a, a ring of fire around it or you have I don't know why fires on my brain today but you have you know like maybe laser shooting out of it or something like that right like it basically adds another layer of animation to that city skin or like a glow like maybe it glows red or purple or something right like I think that would be really cool something to consider for them but either way all of these things being cosmetic only I think is huge and really good for the future of the game the next thing we're going to talk about is a new civilization now I actually made a video very recently where I talked about two big problems that are facing rise of kingdoms okay and the second half of that video I talked about sort of a lack of content this summer and the big reason for that was because we didn't get a new civilization right typically the new civ comes in May June or July and you know or, or I guess in, maybe in August but we're in August already and I was speculating that maybe we won't get it but maybe we'll get it around Christmas and it seems to be the case that I was right in that prediction which honestly I had no uh pre like I didn't know that going in like 
like I literally was just guessing but I do know that civilizations are a big marketing opportunity for Lilith and so I assumed like if not the summer when's the next best marketing time it would be Christmas and so based on what Chiskel shared with us in his video it sounds like the new civilization is coming around Christmas so it could be you know they didn't say Christmas but it would be like the end of the year or maybe the beginning of 2025 that is sort of the time frame for when the next civilization is coming to the game I'm excited about that we got a sneak peek of the new civilization last year in September for the five-year anniversary it seems like it's going to be sort of the Aztec or Mayan civilization they maybe they could change that who knows I think that maybe that civilization release got delayed with the new graphics update that could be possible but regardless that seems like the time frame that we're going to be getting a new civ I'm very excited that it's not that far off right I was worried that it wouldn't come until next summer which I feel like would be way too long between civ releases I know that it doesn't really change the game but it does bring a lot of new players into rise of kingdoms and so I'm very excited to know that it is coming down the pipeline it is coming soon and that's pretty much that they didn't give us any details we don't know what the troop buffs are we don't know what the special unit is anything like that we have no idea but it will be coming soon so hopefully we'll hear more information about that hopefully they'll start to release some teasers around like I don't know November or something like that that'd be really cool now the next thing that I want to talk about here is actually something that I touched on in yesterday's video where I talked about a possible new tier of units coming to rise of kingdoms now in that video if you missed it I said that it doesn't sound like they're going to be adding tier six but another tier to the game in other words a sort of fifth troop type that would come with a new age that comes after tier five and so it's not really tier six even though it comes after tier five you can watch that video it's like a 30 minute video where I break down literally everything that we know so go ahead and watch that but one thing that I did touch on in that video is that the developers at the LA meetup said that they were considering having an automatic tier five unlock when you reach kvk4 and I wanted to talk about that a little bit more in this video because I did sort of brush past it in that video but I think that this is actually actually a really good thing and this is you know I know that that is an unpopular opinion from players who just got tier five right I completely understand that especially if you spent money to get there but first of all we don't know what they mean by this right it could be the case that you know they may be thinking okay when you hit kvk4 you get to choose one of these four that you unlock for free right they give you one of the four not that you get all four of them unlocked automatically maybe they're only going to give you one of them or maybe they'll automatically unlock your civilization's special unit right you will automatically get you know for ottoman it would be the elite janissary right I think that could be something that they're considering so they didn't give us any details here they didn't say that you would instantly like unlock everything before it it could be the case that you would still have to you know if you didn't get called arms at all it would still be zero out of ten right and Kevin would be zero out of ten you would just get the ability to get tier five units it would just have way less stats right so they didn't specify any of that so if you did just get tier five units I don't want you guys to be alarmed by this because they didn't really clarify we don't know if this is actually going to happen but regardless of the implementation I think that this is a good thing right and the reason for that is because right now the new player experience is very difficult it's very hard to get into rise of kingdoms because you feel like you are so far behind right like it's gonna take a new player at least like a year to get all tier five units at this point okay it could take a little bit longer it could take a bit shorter if they're spending uh, in the game but let's just say it's a year let's say that it takes them a year to get tier five units I think that's what it took me about about that time maybe a little bit longer it was a little hard harder to do back in the day because there were fewer events to get speed ups and stuff but that means that for the first year the only thing that these players are really concerned about is upgrading their city hall and going through their technology which means by the time they get to season of conquest like okay sure they've got their tier five now but they have no commanders and they have no good gear or anything like that because they've spent all of their resources and all of their gems getting tier five units right and so it took all of that just to get here and they still aren't going to be you know caught up because they won't have any commanders or gear to put those units with and so I think that for the new player experience it would be very important to speed up that process right and if that means that players get to unlock you know one or all of these tier five units when they reach kvk4 I think that that would be a good thing now the other thing too is I want to mention like if you did spend money to get you know tier five units or you just got it and you feel like you'd be ripped off keep in mind that that is a sunk cost fallacy right like you actually already spent whatever it is to get tier five units there's no getting that back regardless right so like it's not like you're losing anything there like you might say well it's not fair because I spent it's gone 
it's actually gone so like now i'm not saying that there shouldn't be compensation maybe there should be right like if you unlock tier five within the last let's say i don't know 12 months or something like that maybe you should get some sort of compensation in the form of like a pile of gems or whatever the case might be i don't know that's something that maybe they can consider but however they compensate players who recently got tier five is up to them i think that's probably a good idea at the end of the day but either way i think the automatic unlock of tier five units when they reach kvk4 is a good thing it's one less thing that they're gonna have to worry about and they can then start to worry about getting commanders and getting equipment which is really what matters in the end game so overall again very good change here i've always been talking about improving the new player experience and i think that you know speeding up players to the end game at least in terms of their technology right if they want to take their time through kvk one two and three and enjoy those kvks i think that's perfectly fine those kvks are beloved by many players of the game and and i think players should enjoy them but in terms of like personal account progress i think speeding that up would be great all right let's talk about what i mentioned at the beginning of the video which is commander resets for kvk three so basically the developers said that they were considering by the time a player gets to kvk3 giving them a commander reset in the game and i think that this is amazing this is something that players have been asking for for literally years at this point and i think this is nothing but a good thing there is literally no downside to this i don't see anybody with a counter argument to this i think this is great and again this comes back to the new player experience okay the reason that this is so important is because as new commanders come into the game the power creep extends farther and farther and some of these older legendary commanders simply cannot hang with some of the new legendary commanders it's just it's just not possible right like they just don't have what it takes to really compete in today's end game meta and despite that they still cost legendary commander sculptures they still cost you know gold stars to get there and so it's really unfortunate for a new player to invest so heavily in these commanders not knowing that they are functionally almost useless in the end game right and so you know giving them the ability to invest freely for the first you know two kvks and do whatever they want and then when they hit kvk3 there's one chance maybe one maybe more i think the developers actually hinted at maybe it would be more than one but let's say it is only one having one commander reset for kbk3 would be awesome and it would sort of reward players for getting there right because i think a lot of players probably don't make it to kbk3 right like we've looked at the statistics here in the achievements and most players don't even hit city hall 18 right like i don't remember what i'm not going to go through and look for it now i've talked about this in previous videos i think like 80 percent of players don't reach the dark age or something like that which is like tier four so it's like or, or tier three or something it's like it's insane right like most players do not make it to kbk3 so i think it's very you know important to reward them for doing that and you know remove some of that early game punishment right they shouldn't feel punished for investing in a early game legendary commander because after all it is a legendary commander and so they're sort of misled almost into thinking that this is part of the top tier of the game when in fact it is actually not these commanders are much worse than the commanders that you get in the end game right now there's some exceptions here i'm not going to say like they're all completely useless there's some exceptions but for the most part like you know getting ragnar and stuff like that like there's really no use for it you know commanders like leonidas aged super poorly so players might have them from back in the day and so i think that a kvk commander reset would be only upside it's only positive right the players will feel like they can make a good decision when they get to kvk3 and also by the time they get to kvk3 they're going to understand the game a lot better than when they first started the game and they can make a good choice and pick the commander that they really want to you know rebirth or reset or get the sculptures back or whatever and it could also be something that players plan for right like they can say okay in the early game i'm going to put all my sculptures into ysg right and then once i get to kvk3 i'm going to reset ysg and then i'm going to put them into yuge leong when i get access to him or something like that right you can kind of make that like strategic play and i think that that is that feels good for players right because it feels like their choices actually matter and that's huge for a new player right and i think that again this is only upside it's great for the new player experience so i do hope that they consider doing this and possibly consider doing it more often than just a one-time thing right it sounds like they're thinking that it would happen during kvk3 personally i hope that it happens more than that or i mean look if you wanted to give everyone one for free and then it's 
you know 10,000 gems to do it again that would be a, that would be a bargain honestly that would be a bargain and I mean look it costs 10,000 gems to change a sieve right so like it's not like that's a steep cost let's be real would it be very hard for free to play yes it would be very hard but you know what's even harder saving up more sculptures for a whole new commander right and so like you know if they wanted to do one for free or two for free and then make them like 10,000 for the second one and then 20,000 for the third one or whatever and like make it more expensive as you go up maybe that's something right but if not you know let's just let's just call it even let's just say everyone gets one for free that'd be good also keep in mind I hope that they'll give this reset to players who've already done season three of kvk right like that would be insane if like all the new players got it but all the players that already did kvk3 don't get it that would feel really bad for the old players and so I do hope that they give every player at least one reset right would that really hurt them too much I don't think it would okay just let players make up for their bad decisions all right give me back the sculptures for my dang sargon that's what I'm trying to say now the last I'm going to talk about here is why I wasn't at the LA player meetup now I do want to say that Lilith did invite me and they did offer to fly me out and that was super generous of them and I really do appreciate their you know reaching out and, and wanting me to be there they genuinely seemed like they wanted me there and I really do appreciate that I just had too many scheduling conflicts throughout this whole month I have upcoming travel plans the weekend before I mentioned this in my recent video but my best friend got engaged and so like there's just been like so many things that have been on my schedule and so many like question marks as to whether things will happen or not that I just couldn't make it work I couldn't actually be there which is unfortunate right because I do want to go and I mean look rise of kingdoms has like been a big part of my life for the past six years almost most, and it's literally basically my job at this point and so I do love this game a lot and I do want to actually go to an in-person community event but the timing just didn't work out which is just unfortunate so I was invited thank you Lilith for inviting me and please invite me to another one I will do my best to make it there and especially if it's on the East Coast that would be even better that's like that would be awesome I don't know why they haven't done one in New York City right like I get that it maybe it's like much farther to go from like China right I get that it's a lot farther but it's like the biggest city in the country right so like I, I don't know it seems like a no-brainer to me also uh this past weekend was king's land for me and I'm gonna be honest with you guys that did play a factor in whether or not I wanted to be away for the whole weekend it was a crazy King's Land fight and I'm so glad that I was able to play for a large portion of it I will be making a video soon talking about the results of my kvk it was insane like one of the craziest King's Lands uh, I've ever had probably like top two or top three and I just didn't want to miss that I, I know that rise of kingdoms is a mobile game and like technically you can play it while you're traveling but like let's be real top tier end game players they all play on computer okay maybe some players play on like a big ipad but like pc is is just the it's superior i'm sorry it just is it's just how it is the game plays much better on pc than any other platform and so if king's land is going to come around like i'm going to want to play on a computer anyway guys that's pretty much going to do it for this video i wanted to incorporate all of this into yesterday's video but then i realized that the video would be like an hour long or more and it just felt ridiculous so i let the tier six thing have its own video and then in this video we talk about all the good things that they they talked about which I'm very excited about right and in Chesco's video that was kind of his final takeaway as well he actually said it near the end of the video he said that he is very excited for the future of the game and I know that he's operating in good faith right like I know he gets I think people like to attack Chesco for being a sponsored creator because he's the biggest sponsored creator and he's been doing it since day one or whatever the case might be I think that's super unfair Chesco and I have exchanged DMs for like literally years at this point okay we talk often about Rise of Kingdoms the industry different games and YouTube and things like that Chesco's a great guy and so he doesn't deserve all all of that like ridiculous conspiracy theory bs like he's a lilith puppet or whatever it's it's not true it is just not true okay i'm a sponsored creator as well i know the ins and outs of the back end it, it's not the case it's just ridiculous so if he says he's excited for the future of the game i know he's speaking in good faith i too have a reason to be excited for the future of the game and everything that we talked about in this video it just objectively this all sounds really good to me now the new type of unit thing and the new possible age or era that we discussed in yesterday's video that's a bit of a muddy water and if you want to know my thoughts and opinions on that check out yesterday's video if you missed it and with that being said guys if you made it to the end of the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it comment down below your thoughts on everything we talked about in this video are you excited for any of these changes again these are not set in stone but it sounds like they're really thinking about a lot of this stuff so let me know what you think about all this stuff in the comment section below and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon Peace.